us. So if everyone's ready, um, just for a brief introduction, my name is Preston Vaught. I'm going to be the first speaker on the affirmation side of today's debate. Um, if everyone's ready, I'm going to go ahead and start my seven minute timer. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right, so we strongly affirm the resolution that the United States federal government should ban individuals and institutions from paying ransoms to hackers. Uh, obviously, we affirm this resolution. We're in the app. Uh, basically, the plan here specifically is that the U.S. federal government will ban individuals and institutions from paying ransoms to hackers, except in situations where data deemed highly sensitive and important by the institution is completely unrecoverable. So basically, you see here that the provision to pay ransom for the sensitive data would be accessible to institutions exclusively. And so the actor here is going to be that of the United States federal government. Funding is normal ways and means. Time frame as soon as possible. Method of implementation is also normal ways and means. And as this is a policy round, as implied by the word should in the resolution, we want to weigh this round based on net benefits. As for definitions, we have the definition of ransom. Ransom is basically the practice of holding, uh, you know, specifically ransomware is the practice of holding an item to extort money or property um, to secure their release or some sum of money involved in such a practice. So again, in this context, it would be specifically for hacking and things taken via hacking, uh, typically known as like ransomware. Um, so do we have any questions, top of case, or we're good from the next side? Yes, can we have that planned in the chat? Oh, yeah, of course. My partner will send that. Uh, anyways, on to the first advantage, that of population spending. So uniqueness point one is that ransomware in the U.S. as it stands right now is currently very, very bad. The A point in the uniqueness is that the U.S. is the highest amounts of ransomware targeting in the entire world. In 2021, the global cost of ransomware attacks was estimated to be about $20 billion, and the average ransom payment in 2021 was about $170,000. Two, we see that ransomware is getting worse. According, uh, or Basically, we saw that the average cost of ransomware payment in the U.S. actually went up um, by about $100,000 from 2019 to 2020 and that continues to go up we also see that like the number of ransomware attacks has increased 150 percent in that time frame as well so basically we see that also the number of organizations that are paying the ransoms has also increased a significant significant percent now what this means the cycle is self-perpetuating basically people paying ransomware leads to more attacks when more people pay more ransomware people who do the ransomware basically have more incentive to attack these people uh three is that paying ransom does not always resolve the issue again we see that like uh, paying a ransom does not guarantee that the victim gains access to the data, and uh, in many cases, the victims uh, do not receive the encryption keys uh, that are effective. We also see that common computer bugs scramble user data uh, user data using extremely long in encryption keys. And what this basically means here um, is that this this means that the data is completely lost without the exact key to decrypt. And these virus developers do not most of the time actually hold on to these keys, meaning that the data is lost regardless of whether the ransom is paid or not. Look to the WannaCry, uh, basically a prevalent computer virus and encryption malware product that impacted America. American systems in 2017. Most of these attacks provided a remote address to pay Bitcoin to for personal data ransom. Almost none of that data was actually returned in the event of people paying ransom, resulting in cybersecurity experts advising people not to pay the ransom altogether. Four is data backup becoming more common. So basically, we're seeing in the US data backup is becoming more common. So specifically here, we have like younger people are more knowledgeable about tech and people are becoming more technologically well versed. This means that the storage of computers is increasing, which basically means um, that we see that more computer backups by institutions institutions per government advisement after the 2017 WannaCry attacks. So basically here, uh, we, we see a couple of things. Um, so yeah, basically we see a couple of things. Uh, the, the, most of the data is fine no matter what. Uh, five is slippery slope. So basically paying ransom is often misleading. In scenarios where the data is actually maintained, attackers ask for initial ransom amounts and then for more resulting in massive overpay because of sunk costs. And so basically what we go on to is a link. So basically the plan, it passes in the US population is protected. Specifically, the link chain works like this. Basically. Um, there's less criminal activity, or there is, um, the, uh, wait, hold on, where'd the link chain go? Oh yeah, it's right here. Basically, uh, the internal link chain is one institutions. Basically, we see that institutions are protected no matter what because of this. They have backups in most in every case because the plan specifically covers cases in which um, like you have backups. And then in the event that important data is completely unrecoverable, they are allowed to take the risk and pay ransom. Two is that people aren't allowed to pay ransom leads to less ransomware attacks. The primary motivation of ransomware is to get money from other people, also known as extortion. And thus, if people aren't allowed to pay ransom, there is no motivation to attack people in the first place. Uh, thus, we basically solve the root cause of the issue here. Impacts one, poverty. We see ransomware attacks on people cause massive money loss. There's death and dehumanization. It's particularly a problem for elderly people because much of ransomware distribution in the U.S. targets the elderly specifically because of their lack of understanding of technology and therefore delegalizing random uh, ransom are, uh, basically prevents these people from falling victim um, to, and squandering their savings. Uh, two is that like businesses basically see the A point here is that several businesses lose massive amounts of data every single 
of year and the loss of revenue or even uh, company collapse then ensues, right? So we see that this causes layoffs because people lose revenue and their access to like wow. use their data to their benefit. Uh, I'll get to that right in like just two seconds. Let me finish this contention. Uh, innovation as well, right? Because people lose their data and thus this has a negative on the economy. Yeah, go ahead now. Right. Um, in your plan, you talk about how it's only going to be for highly sensitive and important data, but aren't people typically only paying ransoms if they think it's highly and important, like highly important or sensitive data to them? Yeah. Like I said at the very beginning, this is specifically for institutions. Yeah, it's only institutions. That's that's the that's the thing here, right? Like bank bank records, that sort of stuff. Like it's only for institutions. That's that's the difference here because all, obviously people think their data is sensitive and whatnot. But like this is specifically for institutions, uh, you know, like banks and whatnot. Uh, so advantage two is going to be that of criminal activities. So uniqueness point one is that ransom somewhere is commonly used by terrorist groups and criminal act, uh, like criminal activity groups as well. So obviously, like in 2021, we see the, the Justice Department seized $2.3 million in cryptocurrency paid as a ransom to Colonial Pipeline, which is a cyber to the cyber secure uh, cyber criminal uh, group DarkSide, basically using this money for like uh, criminal activities like ransomware and other organizations and also like money laundering and drug uh, drug money and whatnot. We also see like other attacks like uh, the $1.14 million ransom payment uh, against the UCSF basically given uh, was given uh, to NetWalk which basically included drug trafficking money and mon money laundering and whatnot. Uh, Maryland as well had a similar thing with drug traffic and human smuggling, and then also WannaCry as well. Um, uh, that was another similar thing. So links one, the plan passes. So then people, again, you can extend the link chain that we provided to you earlier. People don't pay ransoms, and thus there's less ransomware as well. Like people, do, there's just no motivation for people to basically have ransomware. Um, and so then what else happens? Uh, the internal link uh, one here is less criminal activity. So basically see that there's going to be less money laundering, less drug smuggling, less terrorism, because now there's like no, like there's less, significantly less ransomware uh, and as a result there's less money going into these things and there's less reinvestment into criminal activity because less money goes to criminals um and whatnot so like uh, like virus development stalls as well so this also inhibits a long-term like uh success of these types of like malware and whatnot because again because there's like less malware happening there's less efficient innovation in terms of malware as well so there's that cyclical impact impacts basically one crime poverty death and dehumanization here right there's less like narcotics and terrorism as well which i'll lead to less death and dehumanization so because of the advantages of one um population spending and then two criminal activity, please vote for the affirmation. Thank you. Okay. Um, I can take verbal POIs. Um, the order will just be off case and then go. All right, everyone's ready. Then I will begin my time. Now, very proud to oppose the USFG should ban individuals and institutions from paying ransom to hackers. A few points on framing to start. Firstly, we propose weighing this debate on a cost-benefit analysis. Secondly, we would note that while the government gets to fiat implementing a ban, they can't fiat that this ban will be followed by everyone the way that they wanted to. That's extra topical. Disadvantage one, the ban only hurts victims more and makes the problem worse. Our first link here is that small and medium-sized businesses being particularly vulnerable means that the most at-risk people will be hurt the most. The majority of victims are small and medium-sized businesses that have limited cyber defense capabilities. This includes things like private hospitals that pay ransomware attacks to protect the lives of their patients when we have um, events of people taking control of hospital power systems or machinery. There is no wider reform of this incentive, and it is impossible to enforce this kind of policy. The punishments will disproportionately and severely affect the most vulnerable businesses. Even if ransomware payments were banned, it is hard to see how it would be so cruelly enforced to prevent people from paying ransoms to save people's lives in hospitals or to save someone's businesses that they have worked their entire life for. Our second link is that the situation could become more rampant. The ban would not necessarily stop people from paying completely. Desperate people would continue paying in secret and just not report it. It only makes the cost of doing so higher and the victim more vulnerable. For example, banning unauthorized migration doesn't stop migration. It just guarantees that the only service providers for those desperate people have no one to check them and they can do bad things to those they were supposed to help with impunity. If banning things that people needed worked, then there would, be, there would not be an illegal drug trade, a black market for human organs, or dangerous people paid to help migrants cross the border. Forcing a ban would only encourage ransomware to become more of a secret thing and get to the point where even victims must be silenced. The impact here is simpler. simple. Similar to the drug problem facing America, placing strict bans on things and forcing them underground encourages more illicit behavior that sometimes makes the problem worse. Without criminalizing payments, paying is mostly out in the open, but without this system, it becomes harder for the government to target the people that use ransomware, which makes the problem worse for posterity. They only target specific institutions, and even their plan fails to acknowledge the fact that they're going to be encouraging it specifically on these 
these people and encourage them to take data at the point where it is irreplaceable. They're going to be focusing on more critical things. But beyond that, even regular people are going to be taking advantage of this and they're going to be doing it in secret. They're not going to be stopping people from doing it. On the individual basis, it makes it much more dangerous because now they're engaged in more of a black market of this sort of thing. Disadvantage two, targeting essential services. The link here is that since ransomware is a profit motivated crime, criminals would target more organizations that would have a lot to lose through attacks, increasing the pain so that they would receive payment whether it is illegal or not. This looks like hospitals, water treatment plants, energy providers, schools, so on and so forth. The reason for this is simple. Firstly, that hackers have nothing to lose. Secondly, that increases the chance that they will be paid anyways. And thirdly, hackers expect that this massive harm to society will create societal pressures for the ban to be circumvented or advocated against. These soft targets have no choice. They have to pay the ransom. This will obviously cause a ton of unintended harm in either outcome. Oftentimes, ransomware is not even specifically for data. They can take control of systems. They can take control of even power grids. At the end of the day, it's not protecting everyone. And it even poses a threat to, again, critical services. Disadvantage three, rebuilding computer systems. Under this argument, note that once you do not pay ransom, you need to store and rebuild your computer networks quickly, especially when those networks are critical for essential services. This has two impacts. Firstly, rebuilding computer networks, especially when local and smaller governments are involved, is costly. That means you're punishing the victim for being attacked. Secondly, rebuilding the network is inherently disruptive to the security measures that were there beforehand. Oftentimes, you must build from the ground up, and that makes your system much more vulnerable than improving upon a current system. The counter plan here is the U.S. federal government should both require victims to, to report their payment of ransomware and improve government program response resources to victims. In the status quo, victims are not required oh, to ransom oh, payments in response to cyber attacks. We would mandate that victims report their payments so that government initiatives to address cyber attacks in the status quo will have more extensive systematic data to address the root of the problem. Moreover, the USFG should invest in current incidents response resources and provide adv advice in attacks. The actor is the USFG, the time frame is as soon as possible, funding is normal ways and means, and what is the solvency under this? The counter plan allows for the government to have access to more data on ransomware, to pinpoint people that are using it, and also to see who the victims are so that they can, again, help them. At the end of the day, the USFG should be responsible for going after the ones who are attacking people with ransomware, not the victims, because they will be punishing those victims, but they won't know, and it'll be in secret. As people are paying these ransomwares, again, in secret and not from the government, the problem only becomes more rampant, but it's under a blanket now. The government doesn't know what's going on. How are they going to be able to track it, especially when most of them are used in cryptocurrency? This is even something that they mentioned in case. When it's in cryptocurrency, it's hard for the government to track, and in most cases, they can't. So we have to rely on mandatory reporting. That's sure. why and it's going to win it for us. On competition, the counter plan is mutually exclusive because you can't mandate reporting payments and ban payments in the first in the first place because no one would voluntarily report that they have done something illegal. Um, I'll take the POI. Is cryptocurrency an asset that you have to list on like tax returns and stuff? Uh, not necessarily. Only if it's over $10,000 do you have to list transactions on cryptocurrency. So technically, that's one of the reasons that, again, a lot of people use it illegally is because cryptocurrency can't be traced. Now, we're also going to argue that the competition on the counter plan is net benefits, because if you implement the plan at the exact same time, the only people that are actually going to be reporting it is these institutions, meaning that it's going to continue in the dark and for the vast majority of institutions and for regular people, which we should care about. Now, let's go on to our opponent's case. On their plan, the biggest problem here is that they're going to be encouraging actually more stealing of data, of, of important data. They're not showing that they're going to take more action to actually punish the people that are acting on, ans on ransomware. They simply say that they're going to, again, be using this data or they're going to only be protecting this data specifically. That means that only important and essential data is mostly going to be targeted. But beyond that, again, regular people are going to be targeted. But a lot of these attacks are going to go specifically to these things because they know that the government, again, is going to help these people and is going to allow them to pay for it. And the biggest problem here also is that it's not always just data that they take control of. They can take control of systems, they can take control of machinery, they can, can take control of power grids. At the end of the day, ransomware can affect so much more and even essential services and things like hospitals. We have to recognize that they're not going to be able to solve for the vast majority of people. They're not going to be able to solve ransomware with their plan in the first place. They're going to encourage it, in fact, and force it underground to become more rampant because no one is reporting it. And beyond that, even with these essential services, it'll become more rampant among them because they know for sure that the government will allow you to pay it and that these people will have the money to pay it. Now, let's go into their, um, basically their only real, um, their couple advantages. They talk about population spending and how the U.S. has more ransomware than any other country, but they fail to characterize how this is a link. They never show how other countries 
have a ban on ransomware and how that's helped. This is not a link. It just shows that the U.S. probably has more money than other countries. At the end of the day, they can't show that this is a link in unique of itself, so it's not actually going to show anything. But beyond that, on all of their internal links under that, they simply don't actually make sense. When they talk about people are falling victim and that they're going to be helping these people because they're not going to pay, so people are not going to target them, well, then they'll just pay them in secret. Again, they talked about the Exxon pipeline, or specific, sorry, the specific pipeline that took control of ransomware and they paid in cryptocurrency. It's because you can't track cryptocurrency, and that's why it's so much harder. It took forever to do that. And if it's not a multi-billion dollar or a multi-million dollar deal, probably the government's not going to be looking into like a couple hundred thousand dollars or even a thousand dollars of cryptocurrency that's traded. But beyond that, if we're going to look at this idea where they try to tell you that they're going to solve problems, they're going to create more innovation, they're actually going to be hurting the majority of these companies because they're going to be losing their data. Who decides what's important and what's essential? In their world, either it becomes arbitrary and everyone pays, or either, again, no one has access to that and it becomes a criminal activity, which makes it worse, which encourages things like drug smuggling, encourages a black market, because we're encouraging more criminal activity on this front. When we make something illegal, we've seen what happens in the past. We've seen with drugs, we've seen with migration. The only thing, only problem is it's going to be mirrored here once again. For all these reasons, so proud to oppose. Cool. Uh, let me get the timer set up quickly. Okay. Um, my time starts now. Hello, my name is Nevin Pai, and I strongly affirm the resolution that the uh, what well, sorry, where is it? Uh, that the United States federal government should ban individuals and institutions from paying ransomware to hackers. Starting on top of case, they talk about the counter plan. Effectively, the counter plan does not do anything; it doesn't solve, and it just per perpetuates the desire to improve this like virus technology. They say like generally, you can't feel that people can follow this stuff. There are no government programs that have like actually worked to like on the counter plan. There are no governments that have actually like government programs that have actually worked to stop like the the propagation of these uh, of these viruses that actually need this type of data. Like where the virus is coming from, they already have this data. There's no need for like having crypto addresses because those are, are again not traceable so you don't actually gain anything from the counter plan but overall we tell you that the government has completely failed at stopping these like these uh these attacks the attacks that ultimately like actually get to people are not going to be like stopped by the u.s government look to the fact that water cry like the biggest like cyber attack in the recent probably two decades uh was stopped by a european team a european team like a european team nothing to do with u.s government so it doesn't have any like they don't have any solvency on the counter plan because u.s government is ultimately not really going to solve for anything and this data is absolutely useless overall we'll tell you why we actually do have solvency as a clarification on the sheet any purchase or sale of crypto is a taxable event regardless of the amount they just came up with some whack ten thousand dollar statistic but that's just not true it's any purchase or sale is is considered a taxable event by the irs in, in america so buying crypto uh, is a taxable event and then remove like selling this crypto or like removing this crypto is a taxable event so it would be indeed illegal if it was not listed on your tax returns and by the way uh, buying crypto starts in the U.S. dollar, right? That, these, that means these people are starting with their savings in the U.S. dollar and then buying crypto. So that means this, these assets are ultimately going to be traceable because it goes back to savings in the U.S. dollar. Um, okay, on the first app sheet, we talked to you about population spending. They say like, uh, as an overview, they say they're they're encouraging more stealing of data and there's less action on what like on people who do ransomware. Again, we told you that the CP is way worse. All they're saying here is just continue doing what we're doing and hope the government has some way of solving it. That's clearly not functioning. That's why those uniqueness points exist. They say it's not links. Yeah, they're not links. It's uniqueness points. Yeah. We told you that they exist specifically to show you that ransomware is extremely prevalent, but it can be mitigated and that ultimately we're moving towards a path where people are backing up more. And we have that link to people backing up more. If you do... If if you're not allowed to pay this ransom anymore, people will invest into backups. They'll invest into like data storage, and therefore they're less likely to actually be uh like fall victim to these attacks in the future. So we mitigate the impacts of these attacks in the future because more people are going to back up their data, right? Uh, we're telling they say like, oh, it's arbitrary on the bright line. It's gonna be institutions doing this, so it's ultimately gonna be uh pretty like yeah, sure, it might be a little bit arbitrary, but again, it's only this provision is only accessible to institutions. Most of the time, they won't waste their money if it's not extremely sensitive, and we're telling you that were the people that we actually care about are the general american population like these elderly people who do not quite understand what it is right uh so like these these internals still flow through right even if like even if 100% of cases institutions pay out this ransom, we're looking to these these more marginal the these more marginal uh cases that were like the millions upon millions of people that fall to um fall prey to these these uh viruses actually end up paying out. So we're saying that that's less likely to happen. Um 
there's like a strong risk of link on the point about how there's people pay rest less ransom because less ransomware will be uh like distributed we tell you that if you're not allowed to pay ransom then less people are just going then less ransomware will be distributed it doesn't make sense to try to take something for ransom when it's illegal to okay. pay that ransom in that country right so that means less ransomware will overall be distributed in the country um and then you and then again it's pretty obvious that you can do anything that's illegal as long as you don't get caught that's like their whole argument here like oh it's illegal it's it's illegal so it's going to go underground and people are going to yeah people are just not or are, are going to start doing it underground again if even if something's illegal you can do it as long as you don't get caught but the law still discourages it discourages it so we say we have a strong strong risk of link we say even if we solve for the 90 percent of people that stop at the point where they realize it's illegal to pay then we solve for the majority and we still win today's round because we're voting on cost benefit or net benefits doesn't matter how you look at it right so we're saying the 90 percent of people the 90 percent of like regular tax paying americans are not going to go underground to get their photos back right they're going to say like okay it's illegal i must stop here and therefore they're less likely to do it again you can do any crime as long as you don't get caught but people don't do it because it's illegal most of the time right so again even if it's like a marginal amount of people that continue doing this it doesn't matter we're still saving the majority I extend everything on the second sheet about criminal activity we tell you how we're actively mitigating criminal activity and they don't have any offense like on our points and on the impact level we talk about how it's actually propagating terrorism and narcotics in america and all they're saying is just continue paying into this and allow it to continue happening right so therefore this de the development of these viruses will continue and then the cyclical like the cyclical system that we described to you will continue to exist they do not solve that with the counter plan so they don't have solvency on that sheet on the this da we talk they talk about victims right oh as an overview here it's simply not true less people as a whole are going to pay ransomware bringing the cost down if we decrease payments to some extent which we definitely will then we de then like we win the round pretty, pretty much we decrease payments overall and then therefore less people are paying into the system and less of these poor impacts are coming out of it right so we're saying if there's any risk of re us reducing payments which we have a strong risk of then you can um certainly see that that this like this uh then this will happen right then there will be a reduction right uh also if normal people don't pay then it becomes less worthwhile to invest in the development of ransomware we're telling you that ransomware will be le actively less propagated because it's not worth it if people most people will not pay it out sure there might be a few people here and there that pay it out but that's not going to be the majority of people uh which means that we solve you buy the fact that some quantity of ransomware groups go out of businesses because they don't have the capacity to attack entire system additionally i concede pretty much all our warrants about how more people are backing up and how active like most of the time these like these people aren't going to actually get their data back regardless of what they pay it out um additionally they try to make some points on their counter plan about how they're going to give data to the u.s government all this data is reported regardless the only thing that you could get from paying ransom is like crypto addresses which are completely useless so you can get every other piece of data about a virus except for these crypto addresses i suppose right. in fact crypto addresses are probably accessible regardless uh but these crypto addresses are completely worthless they're not traceable like the like the neg themselves say on the second next sheet they talk about targeting certain organizations as an overview here read the plan sensitive data is the caveat and it's for institutions specifically so all these things they talk about like hospitals and stuff yeah they're still protected under the plan and most of the time they're not going to have to pay it out because the plan encourages them to back up their data more right um so again we said if it's deemed highly sensitive or important by an institution right uh, so hospitals are overall covered here and we still win because we stopped the reinvestment into terrorism and stuff so we have those impacts as well so we have multiple paths to the ballot here on the last sheet they talk about like computer services uh they say like under the ban you have to rebuild networks this happens in their world too cross apply the fact that in most cases you don't even get your data back so don't actually have any tangible benefits on the neg let's look at a world by world here one team has a world where we have some reduction in ransom payments that means that there's going to be less malware in the future there's going to be less people losing their savings to malware so that overall like less poverty and suffering in that regard and there's going to be less money reinvested into criminal activity like terrorism and all these horrible things right we say that we're actively stopping the future of these viruses less viruses will be propagated in the future because less money is going into their development we also tell you that less people are going to be targeted in america overall because it's just not wise to do this and more people are going to be safe online because they're more likely to back up their data if a ban exists right but um on the neg sheet they talk about uh like they talk about like all these things about victims and how the counter plan will ultimately solve it doesn't solve everything that we talked to you about the horrible status quo which they concede is pretty bad will continue to happen um and then you could also read a perm here their plan has two planks people already report uh to the government so this stays the same so the only new part of the plan is going to be improve government resources in response to victims which we can do with the neg so we can perm them do the app and the neg uh for these reasons i urge a strong app ballot Roadmap is framing, plan versus counter plan.
before the Gertrude and Bob case. How to continue opposing. A few points of framing. First, we have told you that we're weighing this debate on a cost-benefit analysis. That's going to be really important when we turn all of their impacts on their counter plans or, or their plans. Secondly, we would know that while the government gets to see on implementing ban, they can't be out this, that this ban will be followed in the way that everyone will like will actually follow it. They try to tell you that they're going to like enforce this, but then we try and like say that this type of enforcement is going to be really bad. They even can see that the government is a pretty incapable actor of enforcing such a big policy at the point in which they tell you that the government can't even like pursue adequate initiatives right now. On to the plan versus the counter plan. Let's look at the plan first. Right? They try to tell you that the US federal government is only going to ban individuals from paying ransoms when certain data is like highly sensitive. But note that hackers are aware now, like once a plan is passed, a plan is passed that only highly sensitive data and important data that cannot be recovered will let them pay out, right? They tell you that they're only going to make these payments like legal once the data is really, really important and really, really sensitive and cannot be recovered again. Guess what that means? That means the hackers are going to target that type of specific data because under their legal framework, even if their plan is enforced to the T, right? Only these hackers like will see that this type of data is their only real, like, real target that will give them the most guarantee of payout. Now, that turns literally all of their offense. And I really want to highlight this on the flow here, Judge, because they literally shooted their foot. They told you that it's really hard to recover your data once you pay the ransom. Sometimes it doesn't even get recovered in the first place. But what they try and tell you that then the hackers are going to like not want to uh, target this certain data when it's super sensitive and super important, even when that's the only type of data that is legal to pay ransom for, they essentially try and contradict themselves. They tell you that these hackers will specifically target very sensitive and important data under their plan if that's the only type of data that is legal to be paid for ransom. On to the counter plan. We told you that we're going to mandate that people report their type of payments and that they're going to improve government initiatives to support these people in their response as they are victims. They say that they can perm, obviously they can't. You aren't going to report illegal activity and you're not going to like report on yourself, but also we told you that the competition is net benefits. They then say, Firstly, that there's no government programs that have been created to address ransomware. But that actually makes some sense. We tell you that the reason why there's no government programs that have been created to address ransomware is because they don't have the adequate data to do so. They just try to dismiss this and tell you that this data, this pinpointing of where ransomware attacks are happening is unimportant. But we tell you that it's like the exact uniqueness as to why the government is not doing enough right now. It's not having the adequate data to do so. Data is really important because it ensures that you actually know where the ransomware attacks are coming from, where the uh, victims are most vulnerable, and it allows you to implement safe measures to ensure that there's like more cyber security perhaps more backing up of data as they say themselves in those places where people are most vulnerable but even if you assume that the government is an incapable actor in addressing ransomware that literally shows you why the ban wouldn't be sufficiently enforced we turn their link there we show you that if they characterize this actor as like bad then obviously that's going to be worse on their side because implementing a ban that forces these things into the dark and not enforcing it like adequately is going to have much more far-reaching effects than the government not doing enough positive work to implement it now I want to clarify what hacking really looks like. Firstly, data do not, uh, people do not typically have their data backed up. Know that's not always going to be data that's going to be attacked. Secondly, know that uh, like hackers are aware of this, right? Of backing up that it exists. So they're probably going to attack entire networks. That means that they are not going to have like separate, like super layered security measures to ensure that the network is going to be like sufficiently protective of their data. We tell you that once they attack the entire network, most of the times the data is lost. Secondly, what type of hacking typically occurs? We tell you that the literal incentive in the government world exists for these hackers to up the pain because then paying the ransom is going to be more incentivized. But even if they tell you that they're going to make it legal to pay the ransom for like the most important data, that is literally why they lose this debate because they make that data targeted to the T. Thirdly, we tell you that we're going to clear up how crypto records are typically functioning because they're really like straw manning this year. The reason that they are paid in cryptocurrency for the most part is that they are not traceable. They literally contradict themselves when they say it's both traceable and untraceable. They literally can see that it's untraceable, which means that the government will not be able to tell who paid and to who they paid in crypto exchanges. The government, for the most part, doesn't even look into every single crypto exchange. It's just infeasible, even if they could trace it. Thus, there's two reasons that crypto makes a ban have worse impacts. I'll get to that later. On their advantage one for ransomware spending, they assume that people are going to like follow the ban, right? We tell you that they're going to respond to cyber attacks opaquely. They're not going to actually ensure that they're reporting this type of data to the government or even like do it in a responsible way. They're not going to seek government assistance and actually doing it responsibly. That's really bad because the government will not able to be able to number one, address this with like proper initiatives to ensure that it's like attacking the root of the problem. But number two, ensure that this is done in a responsible transaction that doesn't even make these people even more vulnerable. That's also really important when they're rebuilding their network. First, I'll get to that later. We told you that this was very important as it turns all of the impacts on like business layoffs, etc. Because at the point at which when you are a business and you are attacked and you do not have an ability to pay that ransom, or even if you do pay that ransom, you have to do it opaquely and irresponsibly, it's probably 
being more likely that once you lose your data, you're going to face a lot of lawsuits. You're going to face a lot of ability to gain profit. You're probably going to close your doors. That's why we turn all of the impacts there. On their advantage too of criminal activity, we tell you that we turn this because when you make something illegal, you literally push it further into hiding. We tell you that when this enforcement is not going to be done adequately, this is going to incentivize even more criminal activity and uh, less government accountability, ensuring that this type of government is not going to address it at the root of this problem. Onto our case, we tell you in our disadvantage one that the ban only hurts victims more and makes the problem even worse. They tell you a few things here, right? They first tell you that the law still discourages it and they're preventing a majority from paying, but that's a really lazy link, right? Their incentive analysis on why people don't commit crime is that it's now illegal. But this is really different from things such as robbing a bank or selling drugs. Why? Because when I'm robbing a bank, there's no positive harm to me choosing to not rob that bank, right? I either like gain a lot from it or I just don't commit that crime. But when you are not paying your ransom, you're probably threatening your ability to continue running your business. You're probably threatening your position in a company. You're probably shutting down thousands of schools in the area. You're probably leading to energy shortages. So thus there's a much stronger incentive on their side to pay the ransom instead and just keep it in the dark but they never attacked that specifically. They needed to prove why the incentive to just follow the law was stronger than the incentive to literally keep your livelihood up and running. And the point at which that link is essentially untouched, we turn all the impacts on just pushing the problem further into the dark and ensuring that there's no like long-term solvency. On to our uh, impacts here, we told you that similar to the drug problem facing America that just places strict bans on things and forces it to go underground, more illicit behavior, more irresponsible responses, and just overall more vulnerable attacks. Onto our disadvantage too though, we told you that hackers are then going to target essential services, even on their highest ground, because they say that they solve for this with their plan at the point at which they just don't touch like the most important data and they just leave it as is in the status quo. But that note that that literally like blows up our link, that magnifies it even more because when all data is illegal to a, a, like pay ransom for, except for the most important data, then hackers perceive that, hey, I'm probably going to get the most payment and the most ransom once I attack that very important data, because it's not legal to pay ransom for that very important data. That means that the most vulnerable actors are probably going to be targeted even more if you accept their plan. That looks like hospitals, water treatment plants, energy providers, schools, so on and so forth being targeted writ large, that has huge societal impacts because that infrastructure collapses because those schools are not able to serve their children. We tell you that the impacts massive societal harm at the point at which you're literally flipping the incentives of these hackers. You're saying, hey, you're gonna make more money when you target these more vulnerable actors. On our disadvantage three, we told you that we're rebuilding computer systems. They say that in most cases, you don't even get your data back. Yes, you absolutely do. That's why people pay ransoms in the first place. That's why these uh, like hackers don't have any incentive to just like blow it up or else there would be no credibility to actually like demand ransom in the future, right? We tell you that that type of transaction is what makes ransom paying legitimate and is important for hackers to protect as like a legitimate transaction so that they get ransom where in the future. They, we essentially tell you that under here, at the point which you need to rebuild your computer system, you make it a lot more vulnerable to attacks in the future. You make it a lot more like costly to the victim in the first place. That was principally a bad thing because you're punishing a victim. You're not addressing the root of the problem. You're just attacking and putting crime further into the dark. But that was always going to be bad on-site government. Very proud to oppose. Okay. Is everyone ready? All right, if everyone's good, then I will begin time now. The biggest flaw of side government is that even if you take them at their best ground, you buy all of their links, their plan puts them in the worst spot in the debate. Their plan literally says that if you buy their links, that because people are going to pay and because it's, a, it's legal to pay, that the most important and sensitive data will be targeted by all of these ransomware people. So it's better if only the most important data is targeted, I guess, by their own logic. If anything, that is the worst scenario, and beyond that, we'll prove that there's other harms to banning that make it impossible to vote for side government. But even at their own case, the contradictions and the linkages make us that it's impossible to vote for gov. But now let's look at a two-world comparison. On side government, what are you going to see? There's kind of two-fold impacts on what the punishments are going to mean. Well, first of all, people are simply going to be punished for being victims. People are going to continue to pay in secret, and if the government does go after them and does enforce this kind of thing, the people are going to be punished for saving their data. But beyond that, they're encouraging, again, that this important data also be stolen. So on two-fold ways, they're actually encouraging, again, not only punishing victims, but actually targeting the most important data. But beyond that, what we're going to see is we're going to see more transactions that happen in the dark. Remember what our opponents said, basically, that for the most part, cryptocurrency is untraceable. And beyond that, the government, even if it was traceable, is unlikely to look into every single scenario of a, of a crypto. Um, transaction. Opposition's counterplan is the only way that we're going to actually see any change, and that's looking at the world of the opposition.
through their counter plan and through mandatory reporting, we're going to be able to see again what people are doing. If people are paying, we get more information out of them and we don't force them to be quiet about it. Also, beyond that, we protect people and we allow them to again have access to the services. And we're going to increase those services because more data and more knowledge about what ransomware people are using in the end will benefit any government initiative to actually increase knowledge and to actually help them fight these things. And this is what Cami was saying. If we're going to not have any reporting, if we're going to have that go down, then it's not going to be as effective if we're going to try to create services to help people if we don't even know what's going on. When they force it underground, they make it harder for the government to address these problems and they make it harder for ransomware again to be tackled. So ransomware becomes more prolific, ransomware goes underground, it becomes similar to what how we've seen happen with migration, with drugs, with the organ, with the organ um, black market. We've seen what happens when we ban things and that is the side of opposition. We don't understand what's going on. The problem grows in the dark and it only gets worse than what is even happening in this quo. But now let's look at the magnitude of both sides and looking at the impacts. Even if you take them again at their highest ground, we're going to be outweighing on magnitude. By showing that again, the tax on the most important data and important services are going to be increased, which was our contention too as well. And even turning basically their first argument or their plan that they're going to be helping the most important data, again, they're going to be hurting them the most. And at their best, I guess you could say that they maybe they have some somewhat ability to help maybe stop it against people but at the end of the day people are still losing access to their data and if they are paying it they'll be punished for it if we're going to look at magnitude side government provides really no recourse to actually help people and provides no big again impact they give you this impact of criminal activity but at the point where they encourage a black market how are they actually bettering criminal activity and beyond that if they themselves concede that crypto on both sides is mostly untraceable then they are encouraging that black market, which again, turns that link and makes criminal activity more likely on their side. And this is now going into, again, probability. We're going to be looking at side opposition is going to outweigh on probability additionally, because our links are strongest. We've already seen in the past what happens when the government bans things with the examples of drugs, migration, the organ, um, the organ um, black market. All of these things exist because the government outright banned them, already showing that we have access to saying these things. But beyond that, even if you take side government's link, we're still winning our probability because they encourage the most important services to actually be targeted. But beyond that, we still went on the idea, again, that they're going to go underground, especially with regular people, because people are still going to be paying these problems. So because they can't solve the problem and they only make it worse, so proud to oppose. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I have five minutes for this last affirmation speech. So what I'm going to do for a brief outcome roadmap is I'm going to go over a couple of things line by line, then go big picture, perm, uh, and then all the other stuff. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and start my time um, now. Okay. So first things first, uh, on, on F1, they say a couple of things. They say that hackers target like entire networks, right? Like they would entire, ha attack entire networks under the AF plan. Basically, this is this the fundamentally thing, thing here is that this is like fundamentally non unique. They do this anyway. They do this in either world. Hackers will always target the most sensitive and large scale stuff that, that, that they can find. And this would just uh, fail to. Okay, moving on to the second thing. They talk about like hackers are going to pay, uh, like, I guess ha hackers are going to force people to pay. They're more incentivized and uh, the app loses the debate because of the fact like more data is targeted. Extend the fact that we mitigate vulnerability to viruses because virus and because people are more inclined to back up their data. Again, backing up their data is a key link that only the app has in this debate, which means that because we are, we're mitigating uh, backups and whatnot, this means that less people are going to pay in general, which probably means that less individuals are going to pay the ransom, which means that there's going to be less uh, people hacking. Okay, so next on the, okay, uh, yeah, first, okay, so just again, you're voting for the team that is the most amount of good for the most amount of people. The first thing you can vote on, fundamentally the biggest issue in this round comes down to the perm. The fact that you can do both and not inhibit the effectiveness of either the cap plan and the counter plan proves that you can just vote for the app right here. The fact that the government already requires you to report ransomware and the fact that the government resources can can be used while simultaneously uh, not forcing people to pay ransomware means that you can do both. The fact that they can see the perm out of the MG is a reason you can do both. Additionally, much of the articulated offense against the app is reasons why you can't do both is fundamentally non-unique. We tell you that in the status quo, when you do nothing, people are already continuing to pay and ransomware is already increasing in number, which means that there is no unique benefit or there's no unique harm of doing the app because fundamentally, uh, you can cross about the statistic that we gave you at the very beginning about how people are paying more. It's increased by 150%. The cycle is self 
perpetuating. So even if we do nothing in the neg world, uh, and we've articulated throughout this debate that they fundamentally do nothing, then you're going with a world in which either happens. There's going to be more ransomware paid on both sides, which means that, again, there is no unique reason as to why you just can't do both, which means you can just vote on the perm, you can do both the app and the neg, and the only real unique part about their plan is just giving more government resources, which, again, you can do on both sides, and the app, there's no unique offense against the app. Okay. Now let's look on both sides. Let me just re-articulate this overview that my partner gave to you out of the MG. Again, uh, like in general here, they talk about how like, oh, victims are just going to pay more and they're going to go underground and whatnot. But again, we tell you that like I, as a whole, like the majority of people are probably not going to pay ransomware because of the fact that they don't want to do illegal things. They fail to contest the idea about how institutions can pay ransom in extenuating circumstances and that it is not easy or frequent for people to do underground ransom payments. Like elderly people just don't have simple access to crypto, which means that the in the vast majority of cases, individuals are not going to be paying the ransom. What does that mean? If there's less people paying ransom, then these ransomware agencies and whatnot are just not going to exist as much, which means that there's going to be less ransomware attacks and there's going to be less payments. And then you can cross-apply this analysis to prove that there's going to be less ransomware. So we actually turn this argument here, which means that on the net, you're fundamentally buying the fact that we have some positive effect on less ransomware happening, which means that again, uh, because like, again, people, if people aren't going to pay as much, it becomes less worthwhile to invest in the development of ransomware, which means that we solve in some capacity for ransomware specifically targeted against individuals. We'd say that the, like some quantity of ransomware groups will have to go out of business because they don't have the capacity to attack entire systems, which means that in general, you are buying the fact that we decrease ransomware against individuals to some extent. Well, sure, you can buy the fact that like, uh, like, like sensitive agencies will still be attacked, but that is fundamentally non-unique. That happens in either world, and the fact of the matter is that if you just do the AF plan, like you're still going to target like healthcare agencies and whatnot. People are still going to do this. And the fact that it happens in the status quo proves the fact like the neg has no solvency here. And the fact that like they don't do anything again, the government already requires people to do this and just increasing like support and relief after doesn't actually change anything in the matter of and in the moment of, which means that the neg has no solvency for any of the attacks against hospitals and schools and whatnot. And the fact that we don't inhibit the ability of these institutions to pay means that there's not going to be an increase in pay here. They're not going to be increased attacks here, which means that there is no reason there is no offense against the AF plan. Okay, so moving on to more specific things on the population spending, you're just going to buy the fact that because of the fact that like you see that ransomware is increasing in the status quo, there's not a unique reason as to why not to do the plan because it would increase regardless. Even if you take the neg at their best, you still are in a neg world in which the, the number of ransomware attacks still increases, which means that they're again, it's not unique. It happens on both sides. So even if you buy all their link chain about how, oh, people are going to pay more, there's going to be more attacks and whatnot. It still doesn't matter at the end of the day, because even if you buy that, it happens on our world, it still happens in their world, which is cold conceited, which again means that that's not a unique reason reason you can't do the app. Again, extend the reason, extend that we mitigate vulnerability to viruses because virus stalls and because more people are inclined to back up their data. Again, if you can't pay, you're going to be more likely to back up your data and whatnot, and virus prevention measures are going to happen. Additionally, uh, like extend the fact, like the, the reoccurring cycle fact that we tell you that like when less people are doing ransomware, the quality of ransomware goes down, which means that there's going to be less likelihood of infiltrating systems, which means that again, that is another reason why ransomware is going to go down, which means that again, you can extend the impacts on the first sheet on crime, narcotics and terrorism, and whatnot, and preventing death and dehumanization. You can also extend the job loss innovation, which are all unique reasons you can vote for the affirmative in today's debate. Fundamentally, you're buying the perm because there is no unique offense on the negative generated against the app. So for those reasons, vote for the app. Thank you. Yeah, okay, great. Good work, everyone. I guess give us a little bit to uh, decide.